Well, hello again everybody, and today we're going to be having a go at powering up this stellar television for the very first time. Now I'm afraid if some of you have come to see a masterclass on how to actually power up your television for the first time, well you've come to the wrong place because I'm afraid I really have no idea what I'm doing and I'm just winging it as usual. Well since I last saw you I've actually read the manufacturer's data several times and uh, really unlooms have stood about one word in ten. But as I say, I really don't know very much about televisions. So much like a child learns about things, you know, he points at things and he says things like ball or car. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've started to write the names of, uh, of valves and various parts of the circuit. So we know that this is the tuner down here. We know that there's a CRT with the yoke on the back of it. We've got a line output transformer within here. I now know that this valve on this side is a line output valve. We've got a boost valve on that side. Looking up here, we've got um, a line oscillator. We've got a vision output amplifier. Got our two main rectifier tubes. We've got some dropper resistors like we see in AC, DC sets, because of course, this television is potentially a live chassis, so it does share some resemblance to things like valve radios. Frame multivibrator, got a sound IF down there, um, a vision, sorry, sound detector. We've got something called a frame output transformer, and we've got, um, we've also got a main smoothing choke. So I've started off by naming things, and because uh, that's the way children learn, isn't it? And that's the way I tend to learn things. A lot of you have said that I, I seem to know a lot about valve radios. I really don't. I know pretty much nothing about valve radios. But you'll see in my videos, what I start off by doing is I start by writing the names of everything that I can think of on the uh, on the valve chassis and that's start of the that's the very start of the learning process you know that's how a child learns the first thing a child does he learns to name things like you know bat ball car i start in just the same way you know a child doesn't start off by jumping to internal combustion engine does he he starts off with this big overview and that's how we're going to learn to work on a television we don't care how the frame multivibrator works at the moment don't need to know don't care how the tuner works particularly. Rectifiers, we already know how they work because we've got them in valve radios. We don't know much about line output transformers. I've certainly got no idea what a boost valve does. Uh, or a frame transformer for that matter. Doesn't matter. We don't have to know all these things in detail. Now if I waited until I became an expert on a television before I actually had a go at one, we would never make any progress. I would never have worked on my first valve radio. I would have never have worked on a television. Sometimes you have to take the plunge. Now of course there is safety hazards. It's not very forgiving. We've got 15,000 volts coming from a line output transformer here. But then again, I cross the road every day and that kills a lot of people too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advice from people around us. We all stand on the shoulder of giants. We're gonna take that advice. We're gonna proceed with caution and we're gonna have a go. And fingers crossed, we'll get away with it. Now I'm sure you remember last week, I actually got caught out by the across the mains capacitor. Also valve radios have them and of course TVs are no different. Now according to the manufacturer's instructions we should have one of these across the mains capacitors located across here somewhere. Well I've taken a look in the manual and uh, well I can't see that capacitor. Now previously other people have done work on this television so I can only assume that it's been removed. If this capacitor is maybe installed somewhere else I've got no doubt that when we apply 230 volt mains to it, it will make its presence known to us. We've got some other capacitors that we're going to change out. A few people have said, I need to change out the boost capacitor. I think that's to do with a high voltage power supply, which is generated by the lot. Apparently this boost capacitor is quite highly stressed and it's a typical failure point. So I've got to change that out. Now I've actually got no idea the last time that our television was powered up, but I suspect it's maybe within the last 10 years because it has got what I would call some new components installed so somebody's been here before me and i suppose i need to take the guy who sold me this television it's his word to say that you know this was a working television he got it working he'd done the hard work all we really needed to do was you know start doing kind of a rolling restoration on it so we're going to take that chap at his word that this television's going to work when we put power on it but i think just for my own peace of mind what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a couple of hundred volts onto our main smoothing capacitor here, much like we did with that valve radio the other day. Uh, that should bring some HT onto it and maybe that will identify any gross short circuits and maybe just give this big smoothing can a little bit of chance to reform. 
So I'm guessing that a valve radial probably draws a lot more HT current than a valve radial simply on the basis that there's a lot more valves and a lot more components which are actually installed across those HT lines. So it could well be that this 30k resistor that I've got installed in my positive lead from the power supply, it could actually be that that's going to limit the current to too low a value and we won't actually get a lot of HT. I mean I suppose what we could do is we could totally disconnect that capacitor and uh, disconnect it and charge it up out of circuit. Um, you know what, I don't think I want to do that to be honest. I think I'm just going to go ahead, try to put some HT on it because maybe I can then have a poke round, put my fingers on various components here and look for anything that is drawing excessive current. So if we need to take the current limit off, we'll maybe do that as well. So just take a look at my circuit diagram. It does look as though the main HT line, after it comes out of the two rectifier valves, it looks as though it's around well it comes out of the uh, rectifier valves at 214 volts and then it drops about 10 volts across a choke so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually connect my DC power supply I'm going to connect it into the choke uh, connections which is this choke transformer here because uh, that will feed those main smoothing capacitors so that's what I'm going to go ahead and make that connection I don't think it doesn't don't think it makes any difference which side of the choke we connect to because effectively the choke resistance winding is very low. So both those capacitors really should see the full HT. What's the rating on them capacitors? Okay, the capacitor rating is uh, is 250 volts. So I'm going to set my power supply to 200 volts. This uh, resistor here is going to take care of the current limiting. So let's plug in and see what happens. Well, the first thing that happens is I can actually see, for a change, we're actually drawing some current. Let's see if we can put a voltmeter on there and see if the voltage across those capacitors is rising. OK, it is rising. It's rising slowly. So we've actually got 89 volts, 90 volts. So we are actually uh, charging up those capacitors. What I would typically do now is I'd actually probably just leave it like that for a... Uh, a couple of hours in fact that's what we will do I'm going to leave this set up as it is for a couple of hours to uh, let that capacitor stand a chance of reforming I think what we'll then do is I'll maybe remove the current limit resistor and we'll apply the, t the full 200 volts via this power supply and we'll see how much current it draws slowly slowly catchy monkey I'm going to leave this to reform a little bit longer what I will then do is I'm going to take this limiting resistor out of circuit completely and uh, we'll just run it off the straight output from this and we'll see what the current draw is on the HT. OK, well we've got 215 volts of HT approximately. OK, 214. So that's pretty close to the full HT now for this set. So I'm happy. Let's go ahead and switch the output off. And we can see that this number is falling fairly gradually. It's not taking a nosedive. So I'm going to take it that those capacitors are now good. Well, I've got to admit, unlike Shangu, I'm not opposed to uh, shotgunning capacitors, especially if they're all waxy ones, because you know they're all going to be bad. But when it comes to televisions, well, they're not waxy capacitors, but some of them are those horrible, moulded and kind of tar-covered jobbies. Those are going to be bad, um, but a few people have said the one capacitor that you must replace is something that they call the boost capacitor because I think it gets quite heavily stressed in service. And when it actually fails, if it does fail, it can do more damage to the set. So I think that the, uh, the boost capacitor is this one here. And, ac and according to the service information that I've got, that is actually C608. So going to go ahead and we're going to take this one out and of course probably one of the most difficult capacitors to get at it looks as though it's got quite a lot of other capacitors around it so let's see if we can uh, do some snippy snip snip okay maybe if I just get this red wire out the way there we go got a little bugger well, it looks like all the people that told me to uh, go ahead and replace this capacitor were absolutely spot on because it's uh, it's puked all its guts out. Let's go ahead and uh, just measure it for a laugh, maybe. Now, it does come with this uh, bright yellow jacket on, but I don't think we're going to get that off. I'm going to have to cut the jacket off it because it's, it's stuck to it and it's burnt. 
So just looking at the value on it, it is 47,000 picofarad, so I'm glad that we've actually uh, found that because that is the right capacitor, that's the one I needed to take out. So we have got a replacement for that and uh, the one I'm putting in I think is higher rated than the one I'm taking out. So it's actually going to get one that's actually rated at um, 1500 volts, so that one shouldn't fail. Okay, so that's coming up on my tester as bang on 47 nanofarads. I wonder if there's any point in even trying to test this. This has got kind of gunge coming out of its bottom. Oh dear, it's in a terrible state. Let's put it on for a laugh. Well, amazingly enough, it's actually coming up as 49 nanofarads, so it's not far off value. It's actually still on percentage, but I suspect the leakage will be terrible. We'll go ahead and we'll do the leakage in a minute. Let me just go ahead and put this uh, replacement capacitor in before I lose my place. And just for fun, let's see how good our 500 volt rated capacitor is. So we'll start it off on 200 volts first. Okay, and it's measuring 0.4 mega ohm. Let's put it up to 500 volts, which is its rated voltage. <laughs> it actually does better at 500 volts than it does at a 5 mega ohm. I suspect the voltage isn't coming up, it's actually leaking too much, the resistance is so low. It's only pulling the voltage down from this uh, insulation resistance tester. So it's at 1000 volts now. Yeah, 0.3. Yeah, that was definitely past time for replacement, so uh, I'm glad we've got that out of circuit as it could have done some damage. Well, I don't know about you, but I can certainly feel the anticipation building for switching on this uh, television receiver for the very first time. Now, one thing we're definitely going to need to plug in this television set is we're going to need a power cable. So I'd like to actually thank Rob, who's one of my friends and a subscriber, who's actually sent me the correct power lead for this television. I don't know why he happens to have this exact lead, but he does, and it's a good fit. So let me go ahead and just plug that in. Well, because it's a live chassis set, we'd better just go ahead and check that the uh, neutral conductor is actually connected to the chassis. So uh, which one is that? That's going to be that one on the plug, isn't it? Hmm, that doesn't look right, does it? Oh! Well, actually, that was a good find because it does appear... Have I wired this right? Yeah, I have wired my bit right. It appears that, actually, this plug, this connector maybe, isn't wired up correctly. Although it may, of course, be correct for the TV that it came off. So as it turns out, this connector does have a, a screw in the middle of it, so I think we uh, we can undo it. Let's have a look inside. I don't know whether or not this, this connector is polarised, but are the actual wires marked live and neutral? And if I can just swap these over, maybe we can. Well, I'm glad I found that. That really could have uh, could have spoilt my day, couldn't I? I'll put a new power cable on here at some point. Okay, so we've now confirmed that our neutral is connected to the uh, to the chassis. Now I'm actually going to run this up from an isolation transformer, so it wouldn't have been the end of the world if I'd got it wrong. But of course, we don't want to get it wrong, do we? We want to get it right. So I've just switched off some of my lights in the workshop, reason being is the filament string on some of these valves have got capacitors across them. If those capacitors go short circuit to the chassis it can actually put more current through some of the other valve filaments. So as I power this up for the first time I want to be able to look into each of the valves and hopefully we should just see them glowing faintly. If we see any glowing very brightly that would indicate a problem. Okay, that's 100 volts onto the set now. See, that's 200 volts, but my bulb is glowing very brightly there, and we're not developing any HT. I'm going to wind that back down. I don't think it's necessarily an indicator of a fault. I think it just means that we need to put a bigger bulb in our lamp limiter. So I'm going to go for a 200 watt bulb time. 
Okay, so we've got 177 volts on the set now. I'd have thought we should be starting to develop a little bit of B plus at that. I think maybe I haven't got a good connection on something because we don't appear to be monitoring any B plus voltage there, do we? Okay, it's coming up now, our HT is coming up, we've got 100, 150 volts. Okay, I've got nothing on the television screen. I thought I heard something whine then. We've got whistle, we've got, we've got light output. The television doesn't seem to be developing a raster, so we're not getting anything on that, but maybe it needs a bit more voltage. So I think the voltage on this television, it's actually showing it as, a, showing it as 202 volts. Let's look at our amps. OK, we're drawing half, half an amp there. I think maybe I need to look at the service data to find out what the current consumption is of this television. I wish we had smell vision because we've got a lovely smell now of hot things. The valves are all glowing. None of them look to be brighter than any others. Well, I'm afraid we didn't really get anywhere there using the lamp limiter, so I've decided to take it off. It could go horribly wrong, but at the end of the day, the television has got some fuses in. I think the problem is, this set draws 160 watts, so maybe using a 200 watt lamp limiter. We needed a lamp limiter with some more wattage on it. Well, I don't have one to hand, so we're going to go with what we've got, which is, we're just going to try and run it up on the Variac now. OK, we've got 150 volts on it now. And are we developing any HT? Not yet, no. And we're drawing 37 watts. OK, we're on 200 volts now. I thought that should start to come up by now. OK, we're getting HT now. We're rising. So we've got just under 200 volts on the input. So we're drawing 148 watts now, so I would have thought we should be getting some raster and we're not. I'm going to put the lights out in my room, see if we can get anything. Okay, my television picture is unfortunately completely black. I would have thought we should have some snow on the screen, shouldn't we? Okay, so we've got perfect HT voltage, it said it should be 210 volts and it is. The CRT is glowing. So I am getting that lovely smell of a uh, warm valve. Nothing's burning, nothing's smoking, nothing's gone bang. So I'm going to tell you that as a good sign. Now I'm fairly sure that a television pattern generator isn't the right tool for the job at the moment. But I'm just wondering if, uh, if trying to put some image information into it will, will make it do anything. I'm not even seeing a glow from the front of the screen. So I don't think it's working at all. But I've got a pattern generator here. In theory this one does do 405 line, but we've never used it, so, well, my thoughts are we might as well just give it a try. That would probably be the multi-vibrator running, so that's, is that the frame that I can hear? Maybe I can hear the frame, and I can hear a high-pitched whistle behind that, which I think is a line time base. Now, I'm just wondering, I know that this television has got something that it says brightness on it, you know, could it be something as daft as the brightness is turned right down? <laughs> well, <laughs> you can't get the staff, can you? <laughs> So as you can see I've got this lab gear pattern generator plugged into it. Well I've actually got two pattern generators. I've got a lab gear and a COSA one. Now both of my pattern generators, I've never actually tried them before and they have both been rebuilt by me so I'm not exactly sure that these uh, pattern generators are working the way that they should. Now we can see that we've actually got a picture at the moment which is rolling so um, I'm only saying here this appears to be something wrong with the uh, the vertical hold. I can actually try to stop the picture from rolling if I just adjust the hold control and I can kind of uh, almost get it to stop rolling. I think probably what it is is 
I think we're somehow lacking sync pulses because I, I suspect what's happening is the time bases in the television at the moment they're free they're free running they aren't being synchronized via the uh, the frame pulses here from this this pattern generator so that's either something wrong with the television or perhaps even something wrong with this uh, pattern generator but you can clearly see we're getting something so we do actually have a picture now so I'm going to take that as a step forward but what I think I will do is I'm just going to adjust some of the controls on the television let's just go through them so at the moment this is the vertical hold that I'm adjusting and you see if I turn it to one way the picture really just spins around really quickly if I rotate it back I can almost but not quite get it to stop there's almost a sweet spot but uh, yeah I think that isn't quite right so that's what the uh, vertical hold does just let me see if I can trim it slightly better okay that's not too bad now we can see it's very heavily retracing at the moment I'm kind of thinking is that retrace that we're seeing here that's probably just something because the vertical hold isn't right isn't it so that's the vertical hold control the next control I'm going to do is the uh, is a contrast and that doesn't really seem to do I would say that doesn't do a huge amount it's not it's not really giving me a true black color if you really adjust the contrast to one side it appears that the uh, the picture seems to lose its horizontal hold it seems to go sideways so I'm not sure what's happening there now one thing that a few of my friends have said on this television is that the picture looks too bright maybe you can leave it in the comments is there likely to be anything wrong with uh, the picture being so bright are we likely to do any damage is that normal now going back to the controls on the front of the television we do have a brightness control and, uh, it's very dirty this pot but we can turn the brightness right down well, we can turn the brightness up if we turn the brightness up too far it seems to lose the uh, the horizontal hold again so again a lot of the controls on this television they seem quite interactive with one another you adjust one thing and something else changes okay so that was a brightness control what other controls can I see that we can adjust okay we've got one here that says height on it I'm not exactly sure how to adjust the height on the television picture I'm not sure what the correct height should be but that's turning it in one direction I'm guessing that is shrinking it down and then again adjusting the height control almost does act to actually uh, freeze it and stabilize the picture but it isn't stabilizing it where we want it to be is it I'm guessing maybe our height wants to be something like that okay so that's one adjustment now we've got two controls on the other side of the television one of which is called the limiter and the other one is a horizontal hold now I'm not actually sure what a limiter does I haven't managed to find that out yet so let me just adjust the limiter hopefully it won't explode Well, if anything it just seems to make the picture go a little bit darker so I'm not sure what the purpose of the limiter is I'm sure you'll leave it in the comments and the final adjustment that we appear to have here is the horizontal hold so let me just go ahead and tweak that I'm going to be a bit careful all the back of this television is all live and uh, I haven't got the back on it so when I reach forward to see what's happening I've got to be careful not to catch my hand on the circuit board okay so basically if I adjust the horizontal hold it yeah it just basically goes horribly wrong doesn't it okay so that's on this checkerboard pattern now this pattern generator can actually generate some other patterns so it will also do some dots but they're scrolling in the same way I think this one is meant to be some kind of uh, some vertical bars or something like that and then there's a plain raster but they don't seem to do very much so we do appear to have a very noisy volume pot I wonder if this is a lot like a valve radio in that we've probably got some grid coupling caps that have maybe gone a bit leaky after all the years because I can just hear the volume coming up on this and uh, if I touch the volume pot you can hear it's very scratchy 
Now I don't know if you remember this uh, Cossa pattern generator. I actually rebuilt it in one of my previous videos but having rebuilt it I had no idea whether it worked or not and I guess we still don't so let's plug it in and have a go. Now I say I rebuilt it that's probably somewhat of an exaggeration. What I did was I changed out the electrolytic capacitors and I changed out all the old waxy ones which it was full of. Um, it's had a number of mica capacitors. I did actually measure them and they appeared to be okay so I didn't actually bother touching them but it's never been plugged into a television before so this is its first test. Now I think the idea of this, this is some form of pattern generator but I believe the other thing that this will do is apart from doing pattern generation I think you can use it to actually align a television as well because it does call it a television and alignment and pattern generator. I'm afraid there's somewhat of a lack of understanding again here though for how this actually operates. So from what I can see this pattern generator has a number of controls on it. It's got an FM modulation control which is set for 35 megahertz. I don't know if 35 megahertz is a sound carrier. Again, still learning about televisions, I'm not sure. But we can set that to 35. There's another one here that says line, which is 80. I think that's 80 kilohertz. That seems to be generating some form of pattern, doesn't it? Almost like quite a pretty paisley pattern that, isn't it? Okay, and then we can put it onto frame. Now when we put it into frame, I think we can maybe almost adjust this whole control again. So again, I can almost, but not quite, manage to get the picture to uh, stop rolling there. So again, I'm just tweaking the vertical hold there. Okay, I've sort of got it to stop, haven't I? But I'm not even sure if that's right, because again, I don't know how to work this pattern generator because I'm still learning about televisions. But I know some of you lot are very expert, so I'm sure you'll be able to give me a bit more advice about how to work these pattern generators. Okay, well I've just been up on the roof of the house and I've adjusted my television antenna to point towards 1960. And as you can see, we're actually getting a test card now, which is quite good. But of course, we still have this problem with the actual vertical hold. It's still rolling. Although I can try to slow it down. I can adjust it. I just can't quite get it to lock, he said. Almost locking there, isn't it? But not quite. One day I shall come back. Yes, I shall come back. Until then, there must be no regrets, no tears, no anxieties. Just go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine.